when you study the Torah, and I've been translating it, the Yiddish trigot into English, you see, for instance, Leviticus, Vayikara, chapter 18, you have all this perversion and all this sin and evil. And then it says, everyone who does any of these detestable things, such persons must be cut off. That means violently killed from their people. And we know Mashiach ben Dovid was violently killed. And he suffered a death penalty, but not for himself. And we know that the death penalty that is against these sexual uh, deviates in chapter 18 uh, is a death penalty that he took for us. And then you see in chapter 16, it says, the Ohel Moed that remaineth among them in the midst of their tuma, their uncleanness. The, the, when, you, when you go through this word by word very slowly, you see the offerer come forward with a victim. It might be a little lamb. And he lays his hands upon it and confesses all of his sins over the lamb's head. Then the Kohen takes the knife and slits the throat of the lamb. The blood pours out, and then the blood is put on the altar or on the side of the altar, or the lamb becomes a burnt offering. There are many different ways that these sacrifices uh, result, but the point is that the person with the tuma, the uncleanness, is cleansed. Just as when he, the appointed person, accompanies the scapegoat out into the wilderness, after he releases the scapegoat and comes back, he has to wash his clothes, wash his body and be tahor, be clean. And the wonderful thing is that the Ohel Moed is among the people in the midst of their uncleanness so that they might be clean. And what a glorious thing it is to be clean. The, the, the blood is sprinkled. Uh, on Yom Kippur, on the Kippurit. When you read uh, chapter 19, well, actually, uh, chapter 16, the beginning of chapter 16, uh, you see this, uh, that the, the uh, people have to wait outside. No man can be in the Mishkan. And what is the Kohen Gadol doing? It says, Hashem said unto Moshe, speak unto Aaron thy brother that he come not at any old time that he wants into HaKodesh, into the sanctuary within the parochet, the, the curtain, before the Kaporet, the atonement cover, which is upon the Aron, the, the Ark of the Aseris and the Rosh Ten Commandments that he die not, for I will appear in the Anon, in the uh, cloud upon the Kaporet. And then you have the Yom Kippur ceremony and the two goats, one for Hashem and one for Azazel. And then you, you see uh, the uh, the the, the dom of the blood of the bull and how it is sprinkled. He takes his forefinger and he sprinkles it upon the eastern front of the kaporet. And before the kaporet, it says, Yazeh, he shall sprinkle. And that very word is found 
in Isaiah 52, verse 15, the, the, the blood is sprinkled uh, seven times, but then Moshiach does a worldwide sprinkling of his blood. And that's found in, as I said, Isaiah 52, 15. When you come to all this and you see the the Ohel Moed in the midst of the people and their tuma, their uncleanness, you see how much we need the house of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Uh, in, in the Ohel Moed, there was sacrifice. There was death. There was blood. There was repentance. There was kapora. There was turning from evil and confession of evil. There was an intermediary, a Kohen. Uh, we know that Moshiach ben David is the Kohen Le'olam al Divrati Melchizedek, Psalm 110, verse 4. But we see his kasonis, uh, which was which was uh, gambled over. Yohanan chapter nineteen verse twenty three. We also see the the Kohen Gadol and his kasonis that he's wearing, the tunic he's wearing there in uh, Leviticus sixteen. And we see the Kohen Leolam al Divrati Melchizedek, the Moshiach ben David Kohen, who is also the lamb led to the slaughter, and the one who does a worldwide sprinkling. And then he commands us to go out into the whole world and to begin new congregations where the little oil moed is um, amongst the people, amongst their tuma, their, their uncleanness. But it is a way of escape, a way of cleansing, a way of salvation. Even in the midst of the tuma, the uncleanness. And so we want to thank God today for the local kehilah, for the believers who gather once a week or more, and they what do they do? They pray. They they have preaching, teaching. They have the Moshiach's Tish. Someone takes the Moshiach's Mikvah. It is a wonderful time uh, where weepers weeping for their sins come forward. And there is salvation and cleansing and forgiveness and eternal life. And we we know that there is a hostility against the local congregation. And many are being sold. The buildings are being sold and they're becoming nightclubs and uh, being torn down, becoming Mormon motels. All kinds of terrible things are happening because people don't understand Ribi Melech HaMoshiach and his Kehilah. But we understand it. When I got to Miami Beach, I started three of them with the help of the Lord. Then I went to New Jersey and helped to start some more. Then I came over to, to New York and started doing the rabbi from Tarsus all over the United States and Canada and England. And, you know, I knew that the Lord was going to answer my prayer. And what was my prayer? I was down at the American Bible Society, and I was praying for Yiddish, and certainly the... Yiddish Bible needs to be thrown all over Borough Park. And we're getting a shipment very soon of the Yiddish 
uh, Bernardus Shaw Triglot uh, from the Netherlands. It's already come on the ship. It's already gone through customs. And now it's getting ready to be delivered by truck. And I prayed. And you know what? The Lord answered my prayer. Someone from that very Bible uh, society called me. And the next thing you knew, we had people on four continents helping us with the Yiddish. God answered my prayer exceedingly abundantly. And I want you to know, my friend, that you need to be in the house of God on the Lord's day. And you need to find a congregation where the, the Bible is believed and faithfully taught. Take communion. You need to have the Moshiach's Tish. You need to be uh, uh, among God's people. You need to be praying with God's people. You need to hear the word of God with God's people. You need to hear the Bible preached. You need to grow in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And you need to uh, realize why it's so important for the Ohel Moed to be in the midst of the people with their tuma, their uncleanness. Because God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And upon this rock, I will build my Kehilah. And the gates of Gehinom will not prevail against it. Moshiach ben David, come into my heart, forgive my sins, help me find a Kehilah where the Bible is believed and faithfully taught, help me become a pillar in the house of God, and help me go out into the highways and byways and preach the good news and bring others to a saving knowledge of the Lord. And Boshiach, come into my heart right now. Cleanse me. Heal me. Touch me. Forgive me. And take my life, whatever it was worth before. I know it'll be worth so much more when you take it and use it for your glory. Yeah. And that's what we're praying tonight. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray this. And we ask God to bless this message. And everyone who hears it, amen.